La Jolla, Texas, March 18, 2008. Myra Lisbeth Rosales, 27, was known as the heaviest living woman at 1100 or 1036 pounds. Either way, she was over 1000 pounds. If you watched any of my videos, you will know. This isn't a weight loss channel. Myra resided with her sister Jamie and Jamie's four children. Eliseo Gonzalez Jr. was taken to the hospital. He had serious injuries to his head and he was having difficulty breathing. Myra would actually call Jamie to tell her to come to tend to her child. She would ultimately end up calling 911 to get her nephew help. Two days later, unfortunately, Eliseo he would die. He was almost three years old. Aunt Myra said she accidentally injured him while trying to pick him up. Her right hand slipped, which caused the injuries. Also, it was said that she had rolled over on him. That would later be the reason why her nephew died. The media dubbed her the half ton killer. She was charged with capital murder. She was actually looking at life in some articles, the death penalty. If found guilty, Jamie was also arrested on child neglect charges. The Department of Human Services, or whatever they call their child protective agencies in Texas, was very familiar. With Jamie Lee, she would leave her children a lot with her sister, knowing her sister was bedridden and couldn't get around at all properly to care for the children. And they, there were four children before the death of the baby. However, medical staff didn't think that this was possible. He died from blunt force trauma. Myra was physically immobile. She couldn't stand up. Her legs couldn't hold her weight. She'd been bedridden for six years. She took up the space of one king-size bed. That's where she laid and stayed. This made it impossible to kill her nephew. By the injuries that the child had. They didn't think that this was possible. Was she telling the truth? Even the medical reports would read that the small child had prior bruising on him. He was repeatedly being physically abused. Was it by Aunt Myra? But she said she was responsible, so she was arrested. You can imagine the headlines. She was actually booked in her own home and jailed in her own home. The local jail could only house inmates up to 500 pounds. She wasn't a flight risk, so they didn't have to worry about her fleeing. Myra had taken the blame. For her sister Jamie Lee, prior when Jamie had struck her son with a hairbrush after the child refused to eat, paramedics had arrived. Jamie unfortunately had a history of abusing all four of her children and neglecting them. Again, she would leave them with her disabled sister. I mean, her sister. Was so obese, she couldn't move. She was definitely disabled to be able to get up and take control of whatever situations that was going on. 
in the house. She would later confess to her attorney and asked of her sister to take the blame. She would work with her attorney to get Jamie to confess to the murder. It was a TLC documentary that I watched and it was very sad. I couldn't believe that this woman was going through this. Even though she was very obese, her demeanor didn't seem like she would do anything like that. I've watched 600 Pound Life and you can see the nasty rude ones. They would be that way even if they were 150 pounds, you can tell. But she just didn't strike me as someone that would have intentionally murdered a child. And this child was being beaten prior to his death. She didn't strike me that way. Jamie had actually went on the run with her husband. She was located two and a half years later in Veracruz, Mexico. Now, some articles said she turned herself in. She wanted to come back to America because her husband, I'll just say, wasn't so nice to her. I'll just leave it at that. Jamie was given 15 years so she will be released not too long from now in 2025 even though Myra felt embarrassed about the documentary honestly it's really what opened the doors up for her Dr. Jetta Brown from the adult protective services had came in and she would later diagnose Myra with ammonia and pulmonary edema. Dr. Brown said she might have had one week left to live. They actually had a double wide ambulance come and they couldn't put her on the gurney. It would take 10 men to lift her again she is over a thousand pounds and they would have to literally slide her in to the gurney on the floor of the truck and i remember them asking her how much did she think she weigh she said the last time she weighed in she was like 776 pounds so she was off by a few hundred Myra said, quote, I was alive, but not living a life. I was dying. I don't know if you had seen any pictures before, but you could see it in my face, unquote. It seems Myra, who at one point was close to her father, she had found out he was cheating and she said it hurt. So this might have been why she decided to eat as food being a comfort when someone asked how do you think or why do you think the weight began to just balloon on you she also says that she ate as much as her siblings they showed pictures of her when she was younger and she was the average size, maybe a little chunky in some, but she was a little girl. So she had a little baby fat on her, but far from being obese, even when she got older, you know, she had a little weight on her, but nothing where you would think she would be well over 600 pounds at all. Dr. Narazada, known as Dr. No, from My 600 Pound Life, he has performed 11 surgeries including lap band he removed numerous skin surgeries on her and she was diagnosed with lymphedoma when asked does she still have a relationship with her sister or does she have any animosity towards her sister she said no they have a good relationship her sister had apologized they written to each other. She said she at the time was in the process of adopting her sister's children 
And it turns out, I had Googled it, that she did adopt her sister's kids, I believe. In 2013, she was able to adopt them all. And she even says that they refer to her as mom. So now she's feel like she's living to take care of her nieces and nephews, which is great. I did go and peek on her Facebook page and she actually said years ago she just wanted to have a normal life so if you didn't know that a decade ago she was dubbed the half ton killer you would just see a woman boot up on some pictures with her man she talks about old memories she talks about the new ones she has pictures of the not so good food pictures of the good food she has the funny memes she has the inspirational quotes i mean it's just like anybody else's page she's living a normal life and hopefully when her sister gets out of prison in 2025 you know they will continue or she will continue living her life and i hope that everything does go well when our sister is free. Mara says, quote, food, I have to eat to live before I was living to eat, unquote. This is just a story that has stayed on my mind. So you're gonna just sit there and you told it?